Oh, baby, you coming over? No. Come on, you can't resist this. Oh. <laughs> That's up for debate. Shoot. Alright, so. Um. You said that you were struggling on your portfolio. Actually, before we dive into that, why don't you tell us what you've been up to yesterday, today, for, with your code? <laughs> okay. So, what I struggled with today. We haven't shown any. This isn't being shown. I want you. Oh, you want to show? You want to see it? There you go. Oh, okay. I thought it was showing. No. <laughs> what's showing on there is what's showing. Okay, I know. I just wasn't looking over there. I was looking over here. Okay. Okay, so see how these two things are next to each other? Yes. Like this? Okay, that is what I struggled with because I quite literally, for the, the better half of my day, this was up here and I could not get it separated from my picture. And I had it in one of these things in here, I had a margin. Uh -huh. Remember the margin we put in there to separate it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, when I put in the background, um, the background didn't fill the margin space, so then it didn't look connected right here, like how it was on the example. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And so I was going through each one, and I was looking at my code and being like, okay, this goes here, this goes there, this is what this does. So I have a pretty good idea of what all of my CS does, and I have a pretty good idea of what all of my HTML does. Um, there's just, there's probably a few things you can notice uh, right off the bat that are still, that I still am struggling with, like, i.e. my picture, how it is further down than it is here. That is not intentional. Um, <laughs> Those are little details I wouldn't worry too much about. I know. I'm, I'm going to move forward and then wait for like you to go through it yourself and be like, oh, this is where this is. Mm -hmm. um, but also like right here on the right, you'll see that my background, for whatever reason, over here, like, uh, oh, you guys can't see it on this side, but over here on the right, you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so... Okay, well, let me let me tell you why that is, because that's that could be unique to CodePen, and we're gonna find out right now. Where, uh, and we can inspect real quick using the inspector to see, hey, see what this is? This is actually considered the HTML block, and what you're targeting is your div one block. See how it says HTML as the width? You see it getting highlighted here. Uh, so how do it, I get my HTML block? background color. Well, how do we target elements? This is an ID. This is an element, right? Um, so, oh, so I do HTML. Yes. So you do something with like HTML. Yeah, background. Dipping dash color. Blue. No, I don't want it blue. I know you don't want it blue. I'm just giving you an example. So it's so that you can see that, see the difference. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Look at that. All right. Mhm. Mm All right. Um. And then I changed the text fonts, and I cannot tell you how many times I changed the color scheme. Color scheme. I didn't want to do purple because the example is purple, and it pissed me off. Because <laughs> I feel like purple is the only color that goes. And I really wanted to do green, but I don't know, the green is just so, ouch. So, um, <sighs> is this your background color right here? Yeah. Well, let me show you something. Hue, sat is it? Hue saturation, lightness, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. Let's run that real quick. So that made it see through, so. God, I don't remember what the hell it was. 50, 50. You have to look up. I might have my color scheme backwards. Yeah, I do. Oh, also, I need to get rid of this. 
Um, but there's multiple ways to do colors. Right now you're just... So, like, let's go to a color wheel real quick. How is that a color wheel? Uh, not actual images. Well, if you don't like the green, you can go ahead and find another green. No, I know. I tried several greens. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I so went, you just were... I went through the color wheel and just couldn't decide on a color. Are you sure you just don't like the color green? Dislike the color green? Right? I thought I liked green, but I may not. Okay. I tried doing a blue color scheme. I didn't like that. All I want to do is the purple. I don't even like the purple. I look at the the example and I'm like, I don't like this. You don't like it? No. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll do like a white and a green. So while we're at it, let's look at what you'll be doing for the next part of the portfolio, just so that I can maybe give oh. you some hints. Okay. I'm sorry guys, my neck is, I slept on my neck wrong. I don't know what I did to be honest, but I woke up in pain. So I created divs already for each of those sections. So there's nothing in them yet, right? Mm -mm. Okay, so this so is a, an eight, have you, have, we, have you come over horizontal rule, the HR tag? Nope. Um, why don't we do something a little bit different today? Um, let's go through W3 schools and we'll just go over what's in HTML. Like what the language, and we're going to do the same thing for JavaScript once you start working with it so that you know what's included in the language. Because a lot of times people don't know that shit exists. Um, so let's see, let's see if we can do it from here. And uh, uh, we'll go through and you tell me if you understand it and if I think you do, we'll continue on. And we're just going to go through the HTML section on, HTML5 section on, um... Oh, cool. I like this. On W3Schools. Alright, so... Okay. Um, this is the basic setup of a HTML page, right? We've gone over this. You have your doc type HTML. This basically says HTML5. You have HTML tag, the head tag, and then what's this title tag do again? It's the tab at the top. Good. All right. And then you, um, how many, then you have the body. One through six. One through six, and then the paragraph tag. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's basic stuff. Um, hi, Jordan. Hi, the Afro Mike. Hey, Big Papa. Hi, Milo. So let's move on. Introduction. Simple HTML page. We already know that. Um, we talked about what all these elements are. The HTML tag is the root element. Um, just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, all right, buddy. Uh, most tags, web browsers, page structure. This is a good image to have in mind because it gives you an idea of how the your normal structure of a page will go. Now, not visually, this part, but kind of container-wise. Like, hey, this is here. This contains everything, and then you have your head Code tag. pen kind of throws me off because I like having that visual in my head when I'm setting up my, my um, like I like having it written down in my code so I can see it. Not having it there, it just kind of, I'm like. Okay, well, what we can do is we can get you set up with a text editor moving forward. After like, my like, profile? You want to do it after? Yeah, after. I already started it. Yeah, after course. your pro portfolio. When when I refactor your code and give you my tips, part of your pro part of your your uh, part of your task will to be that'll moving be the, it from one moving it from code to, to the text editor. Okay. All right. Um, that'll may mean throwing in your doc type tag, your HTML tag, uh, the header tags with links to the style sheets as well. And we'll we'll uh, we'll go over good file uh, formatting and folder structure as well. Okay, you want to move your camera over, you film hogger? Sorry, I forgot that we're a YouTube couple channel now. Yeah, you wish. Just the three of us. I've yeah. seen couple YouTuber channels. They're actually pretty good. Someone just got their kids taken away. All right, so. No, well, not uh, that one. 
I'm talking about couples. My, Milo's the YouTube hawk here. It's just so whack to tell you use Notepad. So um, when I say text editor, the text editor is basically something that you can write your code in, a very basic one. There's IDEs, which are um, development environments, and they're kind of like fancy advanced ones. Can you get him down, please? Milo, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? Down. Let's get down. Come on. Come on. Down. Come on. Down. All right. Uh, this just shows you something that you can write. You can use something as Notepad. I'm going to get you set up with a better text editor than Notepad when we when we get going here. God, I used to do it in Notepad. Yeah, Not well. like do it, but <laughs> <laughs> I used to code in Notepad. Back in high school, that's what I used. Okay, so with a text editor, you can basically open this up into any any browser. Open up your text editor page like this. And you'll see it's just the file opened up and it'll go. Uh, that's good enough. Let's continue on. We're going to go pretty quick through this. If I go too fast and there's something you don't understand, stop me. Because I, I know you've already been working with HTML. I just want you to get comfortable with all of HTML. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Okay. Because cool. I, I'm not, the thing is, is like I may not know HTML well enough to know that I'm missing something. Okay. We've covered, covered headings, we've covered uh, paragraphs. Now, uh, anchor tags. This is what we do to make links, right? Right. And then everything between the opening anchor tag and the closing anchor tag. And the way that we set where it's going is with the href tag. And then we have images. What's the anchor tag exactly? It is it just holding that, that place there. Like it's like a claw and it's holding the link there. You mean why is it called an anchor tag? Yeah, well, what's the function in putting... The function of an anchor tag is to, to connect you to another page. Okay. So it's like the a wormhole. You. Sure. It's a wormhole. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about the alt text. What's the alt text do for an image again? Oh, it's like quiz day, baby. Quiz day. Fast quiz day. It's not fast quiz day. No, this is it's pop quiz day. pop quiz day. All right. Hi, Rex. Um, it is the label when you wave over it. <laughs> no, that's not it. Also, it also works. It's the alternative text. It'll show up when it's not there. We'll say that's close enough. <laughs> and then you can set the you can manually set the width and the height. If you manually set it. It will adjust, but if you set both values, it will adjust both values and it will be distorted if you don't set the correct ratio. Yeah, but you can also do that in CSS with just the width or the height. Good, and it's better to do that in CSS. Yes, I agree. <laughs> All right, so heading. Um, so we have the H1 tag, the P tag. What's the BR tag do? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's a line break. So let's say you want a pair. Say you say you have a paragraph, but on one line you want it to drop down. You throw a br in it. Oh, it's not like the. Uh, oh, okay, so it's not like the JavaScript where you put the uh, new line. Uh, no. Well, that's that's another way of doing it. Okay. So, so welcome, Godless Monkey. Hi, Godless Monkey. Okay, so the break is a break. Oh. And there's there's just the br tag. There's not an ending br tag. Right. Okay. Because well. line break, there's no reason to end it. So we're done. Oh, that's cool. So okay. it's just br. All right. Um. We've talked about the HTML, H1s, par. God, how many times are they gonna go over fucking paragraph tags? Uh. <laughs> Do you know what a paragraph tag is? We're right. going to make sure. <laughs> um, so here's something that's kind of interesting. You can declare, um, and this is good practice, to declare what language an HTML document is in. EN-US is typically what we do, right? English and USA. Yeah. So uh, you can set the language here. And there's, I mean, that, like I said, there's screen readers and stuff that this is important for. Um, I believe there's SEO purposes as well. I didn't know. Oh, oh, the title uh, attribute. It's been a while since I've touched this. So the title attribute. God damn it, Milo. The title. 
Hi, Darren. The title attribute... Ugh, sorry, buddy. Um, is something that you can assign so that when you hover over it... What? You'll see I'm a tooltip. I'm a tooltip. And so... I'm a tool. That's what you... Tip. That's how you can do it. And you can do this for almost anything. That's awesome. I'm going to start doing that the shit out. <laughs> now, keep in mind that that this is will only work on PC because there is no hover on your phone. Oh. Right? Um, so that's one one attribute they can that you can use. Uh, let's see here. We've talked about the href, size attributes, the alt attribute. Yo, I didn't know this. What didn't you know? Is this not deprecated? All right, All right nothing. Uh, uh, double quotes are more common when uh, using attributes. Doesn't matter though. Mm, all right. Alt. Okay, other things that we can use is we can use the disabled value to disable an input element. An input element would be things like a drop down, a text box, text area, a radio button. We can actually disable that. Uh, oh, yeah. I, we, I briefly touched on that. And then, of, of course, the inline styling as well. Right, let's continue on. Headings, we've already seen all those. Okay, horizontal rule. So, uh, horizontal rule is a line that goes across for the entire container. So if your container takes up 50% of the screen, it'll go for that full 50%. You can style it as well. So like when we were looking at here, this is a horizontal rule that someone styled. Just a line that goes across horizontally, yeah. and you do that with a uh, with a single HR tag. There's not a closing tag. Uh, there's just the one tag. See, okay. horizontal rule. Talked about the head element. Cool paragraphs. You want? You don't want to take notes, right? All right. Uh. All right. We've talked about the BR, the line break, the new line, whatever you want to call it. What's PRE? PRE defines pre-formatted text. Fix with font. It is a fix with font. So um, if you want it to be formatted, as you have it in here, you can use the pre-tag. I haven't used the pre-tag too much in my life. Um, but it basically, it's the same thing as just text, except uh, it includes line breaks, and it includes um, spaces properly. See how this is spaced? So we don't have to throw any BRs in there. Mm -hmm. So pre-tag will let you do that. So however you format it inside the pre-tag is how it shows up. Yeah. What is U Charset UTF-8? It has to do with what type of characters you're using uh, in HTML. It's, you don't need to worry about it, man. It's all bullshit. It's just, it's just bullshit technical stuff, man. That's all it is. But it's not very helpful. Oops, sorry, guys. Oh, never mind. California's calling. We want Dylan back. They've been trying. Uh, Alright. Um, so background color. We've talked about the style attri attribute before. Um, let's see. Text color. Font family. Font size. Text align. We can just skip the whole styling section. Yeah, you got that down? No, it's just... If I use CSS, then what's the point of knowing the style formatting? 
Well, it's it's the same words. I know. Okay. Uh, so you know how to make text bold in CSS, text italic. This is sup subscript and superscript. Oh, I didn't know those. Yeah. So if you want words to be, let me show you in here. Uh, so you can wrap this subscript with the sub tag. When am I moving back to here to in LA? <laughs> when they offer me a hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary. By the way, I'm nowhere in worth hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary right now, so I don't think it'd be anytime soon. Um, or if my parents start getting a little old. Uh, um. Okay, so you do italic with the I tag. You do bold with the B tag. You may have seen this as strong. It's better to do with the yeah, B tag. Yeah, I've seen it as strong. I don't like it. Yeah, B is better for bold. B is for bold. Yeah, I is for italic. Sub is for subscript, so it'll drop down like that. And sup is for superscript. It has an opening and closing tag. Didn't you say 120000 The price has gone up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, and then you can, um, there's marked. I haven't, I don't know what marked is, so let's, let's try this out. So we'll create a paragraph tag here. And this is exactly how I learn new things. And, and I don't know everything there is about, um, to know about anything. So I just know what I know. And so let's do a test. And let's run this, see what marked text looks like. I was deep. So Mark will highlight text, it looks like. Mm -hmm. That's that deep. Like Alice in Wonderland deep. All right, so Mark, you understand Mark will highlight text, so that's how we highlight it. I think I do know that, I might have forgotten that, uh, which is equally as likely. And then there's small, which is a way to do smaller text than what you have. See how it's slightly smaller? And then there is when you just deleted text, if you want to throw a line through it. I've seen that before. What's the point in that? So, uh, I mean, let's say we're making a, um, a note-taking application. Yeah. And we want oh, to okay. cross it out when we're done. That's an example. That's good. And mind you, a lot of these things are just tags for CSS that you can already do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the next thing is uh, inserted text. Let's see what inserted text is. Is that INS? INS, INS, God damn it. What is going on? I'm buying a new cord tonight. Insert text is underlined text, I guess. And, all right, so we went over all that. Any questions so far? No. All right. Quotations. You can also do quotes. Uh, so let's go ahead and close these and do it. Do this. So you'll see you can throw quotes on something. It's kind of weird. Zeno Hey, is that uh, is that you, MBZ? No, I think M Boomer changed his thing. Uh, so, Zena, uh, you'll see right here, we have uh, quotes. This is kind of strange to do it like that. I was told in college you use strong and M tags instead of I and B tags. Is using B and I tags frowned upon in the industry? No. <laughs> totally uh, judged. <laughs> that's just some bullshit they told you. Uh... And honestly, let's see here. If you want to know, let me let me show you right now. Difference, I think you might have it backwards, if anything, between I uh, and EM. And EM. So.
So apparently B and I are the old way of doing things. You can use strong and M tax. It doesn't fucking matter though. That's the truth of the matter. Until one of them becomes outdated so much yeah. that it doesn't affect anything. Which I don't think is going to happen. So there's also block quote, which is cool. So like you can also, here. I just feel like the less you have to write, whether it's from like two characters to one character, the whole thing about keeping your code as simple as possible. All right. So <laughs> Same, exactly. So here's block quote where you can see it kind of treats it as a quote. It's indented outwards. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So block, block quote. quote. Yeah. So, I like that. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with this site tag. Let's see if it reads up. We can read up on it. The site attribute. Yeah, what is that? Is that like? It looks like it's citing where it's coming from. So I bet if we were, if we, if we hovered over it, we could see where it's coming from. Like, um, but you can't see it. It's not hovering. No, not hover if we looked into there. Uh, I'm not sure how, what. I know this goes in there. And it'll, apparently, this is how we cite our source in the HTML. If we want to. Uh, I'll have to look into site more. But when you use block quote, now you know. Hopefully, we run into it so I can learn as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> block 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 quotes great, man. When I was a um, when I was a data center blogger or tech tech blogger, I use it all the time. All right, so um, you have this abbreviation tag here. Shit, man. I'm ordering something the second we're off here. Our, our screen that we are looking at my, that you, my cord's that bent and I haven't been wanting to buy a new one because I'm going to buy a new monitor but I think I'm just going to buy it since I'm starting my side project okay so yeah so this, this, uh, this is for a uh, abbreviation and you can put the title in it uh, if you want to hover over it to see what it is so now we're combining things but basically this this lets the um the uh, HTML document know that this is an abbreviation, and we're just adding a title tag on here to show what it is. Oh, that's actually super cool, because it's like when you're writing it in a document where you have a full name, and then you put the quotes and you like abbreviate it, so the rest of the time, and it's like doing that in HTML. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. All right. Um, add I'm, I'm a writer, guys, so that shit to me, seeing writer like things in anything else is just like, oh. <laughs> right, so you have this address tag as well. That's cool. Um, It'll lay it out in the address format. Do uh, well, only? you have to put you have to put your tech you have to put your own stuff in here, but it will make it a little bit italic and you'll line break it. But it also just lets the HTML document know that this is an address. Mm -hmm. um, it's just no, another tag. Some of these tags will feel like they don't really do shit. Um. So, is a tag like CEO searchable? SEO? Yeah. Uh, sometimes some more t these tags are better than others. Uh, so site, you can see that normally I'll make it italic, but this is also another thing that in in the background lets lets the search engine know that this is a you're citing this. You know what I mean? Oh, so someone couldn't say that you're plagiarizing. Imagine imagine these tags that look like look like that they're not doing anything. Imagine that and you, the computer is trying to tell a blind person the purpose of it. And that's what a lot of these tags do. So instead of just reading this, what it's saying is, this is citing a source, the Scream. And so similar to how we did with citing our source for the image, or for the quote earlier, and the abbreviation. So we're adding additional context, is what some of these tags are doing. I like that. Um, visually, they're not, visually, they're not going to do too much. Biodirectional tech. What the fuck is this? This is like one of those things where they smoked a joint and then they had to figure out how to get this shit working. All right, so this is if you want to reverse the direction of the text, apparently. And they have. Oh my god, I can read that! <laughs> so this line will be written from right to left. 
So you have the BDO tag and the direction. You have to pass in the direction attribute to get this to, to work. I bet for dyslexia people, that thing is amazing. All right. Which is why I can read it so fast. So we've already talked about comments. I've shown you the shortcut. You hold down control, select. Yeah, I've been. I've used it a few times. I feel super uber like. You're legit now. Legit, yeah. Oh. Uh, conditional comments. Um, these are comments that only show up if you're working with certain stuff. Don't worry about that. That's pretty cool. It's like surprise, motherfucker. Comments are here. <laughs> All right, so HTML itself, just regular HTML, has 140 colors that are supported cool. by name. So you see, oh, by, by you know, name. I put teal in, and the ugliest color I've ever seen in my life showed up. And I'm like, that's not teal. <laughs> so these are all the supported colors in HTML. All right, um, you have RGB as another way of doing color. Remember that red. Green, blue. That's one way of playing around with getting a different shade of green, for instance. Yeah, I actually came across an app that does RGB generators. Yeah. So all you have to do is take a picture of a color and then it generates the color for you. Yeah, like here's an example. This is black, this is gray, this is a little bit grayer, light gray, white. Um, there's hex values, which is what you're using. Another example, and it's, there are hex values that are the same as RGB values. Uh, let's see. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, Inline CSS. Team <laughs> hex code over here. Um, so we've talked about inline CSS. This is in. Why would you choose one type of color? over another so um well it depends rgba so rgb hex and colors are three different ways to get the same exact color right. now just a straight up color name there's not as many options so that's one reason why you wouldn't use that same thing with rgb and the hex uh, another thing is that there's RGBA, which still a fuck ton of colors, more color you'll ever need. But that A is is basically for uh, alpha or opacity, and so you can set it so it's only 50% see through. Uh, and then there's hue, saturation, and lightness, which is another way that you can do it. And then I think there's something else. I think I'm leaving something off that. All right, so we've talked about external CSS. This is how we link our style sheets. This tells the, the, basically says, hey, this is a style sheet, and this href is the file path to the style sheet. Okay, so the href, the file path, is it always going to look like that? Or Styles.css? It's going to look different. It's going to look different. It's going to depend on how your folder structure is. It depends where your file is based off of where the file that you're in is, where this is linking, um, where you want to go. Okay, because that's what I was thinking, because, yeah, I remember having to link my code. And this is something, this is something you're going to have to do in your, in your um, document when, yeah. when you switch over to a text editor when yeah. you're done. Yeah, which is exactly why I wanted to start being able to do that, because I know that that's a big part of website development. Yes, that's part of it. Okay, not a big part, but as a, I, when I was in high school of making websites, that was the trickiest thing for me. All right, uh, you know about the border? You, uh, how yeah. thick of the border? What type of border? What color of the border? Um, okay, this is all CSS, I was going to say. Yes. So we've talked about padding. This goes all around. I've really gotten padding and margin down. Let me tell you, I fuck with that shit every day, and I mess with it so much. I now know margin, padding. <laughs> all right, then you have IDs, right? You familiar with IDs? Oh, yeah, I've used a lot of those as well. All right, classes. Oh, you know what? I wanted to talk to you about IDs and classes. Okay. Um, One. How do you go about naming such said things? And two, are there predefined ones that I don't know about? 
No. Uh, so, well, one, you should name it something relative. I try, but how do you find the relativity in a dip? So, um... Like, if you go let's, back, right, let's go, go to back. my... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, wait, 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 wait. Go go to my HTML. All right. Okay, see here? You have an idea? Yeah, see that? I got about me, <laughs> about me P because I was like, this is my about me div. Okay, okay, but this is this paragraph is my about me like literally. So right. I put a P on there for paragraph. I'm oh, like, what? I don't know if that oh. makes any sense. Can anyone else look right. at my code and my IDs and my classes and go, oh yeah, okay, I see what they're saying, okay. or is it just all in my head? Because you know, sometimes I go back and I'm like, what the fuck is this? All right, well, calm down for a second here. Uh, one thing I would change about me is fun. One thing I would change is I would use camel case. That would be the convention. Oh, okay. So you want to be able to see this real quick and go from there. Now, you could, if you, um, you, about me section would be all right. About me is fine. And if you want, you could even do about me div. Um, I like that. And then you could do about me paragraph. But if you're going to use the same stuff for the paragraph, you should, for another paragraph, you might want to use a class. Right, and but then, I just haven't, I haven't And then it in that sec section, you wouldn't necessarily call it about me. You'd give it a more general uh, name. Like, um, you know. Um, Paragraph style. Yeah, P, st um, P style 1, P style 2, uh, something like that. Okay. I usually, if it only has two or three, um, I uh, if it only has two or three things in it, I usually give it a pretty basic one, but you try to just be as descriptive as you can, but you definitely use camel case. Okay. All right. Good to know. All right, cool. So I was actually reading an article on that, and I was reading the guy's article, and I'm like, this makes absolutely no damn sense. And he was referencing other articles, and I was reading those articles, and I was just getting more and more confused. <laughs> Okay, so you can also um, chain these elements together. Are you familiar with that? What do you mean chain? So this is a paragraph, and this is the air class. So the paragraphs that have class air will be color red. However, if I were to create an H1 tag here, and I was to give it the class air, Um, class error. Now we're to do test. Okay, Chris, but then what do you name it? What will happen? Well, you will find a convention that works for you. Like maybe you just need something. Uh, like classes, there's no such thing as a predefined class in HTML. Now the predefined classes are in Bootstrap, which is a CSS sheet. Okay. Uh, so one thing you want to name it camel case and you'll generally get better at naming your variables and naming your classes and Chris is right. You shouldn't necessarily include a description of something, but for me, I might do if I know something's um, Font like for specifically for styling font. I might call it font style one uh, something like that anyhow um, even as much as like font color red uh, but like in this class this is a good example of um, this is a good example of something that gives context air color red okay so when it's an air it's giving context that hey this needs to be red so see how this isn't red even though we assigned a class air maybe I'll write an article on naming okay but see how dark see because how our See how our H1 isn't red, even though we assigned the class air to it. Well, that's not a class, is it? Dot air? Yeah. It is. But. How come it doesn't have the same makeup as your class air? Because what do we have in front of it? We have a paragraph tag. So we're nesting these things. So we only want paragraphs who have the class air to be styled that way. So it doesn't make any sense to me because the dot error in the paragraph. Is not an attack. It's not a what? It looks like it's a CSS style thing. 
this is a CSS thing. But what I'm saying is this par this is a paragraph, right? The P element. Yeah. And then we're saying this is a class. Uh... And we're saying only when it's a paragraph and class error do we want to apply the styling. So it's called it's nesting your your CSS stylings. Hmm. All right. Uh, Something that describes its function. Weather Raven HD. Welcome, welcome. Hyperlinks. Weather Van. Weather Van. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about anchor tags. And you've you've uh, we've talked about pseudo classes. You're actually using one in here. Yeah, okay, oh, my next question on this one mm -hmm. is, okay, so these links, yes. I have to be able to link them to my divs. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Okay, so um, I forget the technical term for this, but you see this ID right here? Yeah. What you would do is similar to how we have IDs, right, with the hashtag, we would do hashtag about me div and we save it, and then when we click home, I may have forgot to run the code. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. See how we jump to it? It's going to be a little hard to see right here because let me zoom way in and maybe they'll mess it up better. But you see how now we're going to click it and it jumps to it. It jumps to where that div is. Okay. But you just you, you target the about me part. You say hashtag I want to jump to that ID. And you do it. Okay. Alright, cool. Going over the free code camp beta, I refresh my memory, but that's a good thing, man. Alright, so this is a little bit about link colors. An unvisited link, if you don't style it is blue and underlined. If it's been visited, it's underlined in purple. Um, and if it's underlined, it's active, if it's underlined. Right. <laughs> what? That's just night body, not ignore it. Um, so, and then you learned about hover already. Active. We have more. Let's go ahead. And wait, bring, wait, wait, wait. We're gonna bring this up right. We're bringing it up. So you see, when we hover, you you can set pseudo classes when it's been hovered. You can also do it when it's been visited. Meaning, like, hey, if this guy's already gone there, it is now pink because we've already visited this link. I love that. It's so helpful. <laughs> um. There's also. By default, it's link active. So see, when we click on it, it's yeah. in yellow. That's active. So these are other pseudo. So that's so great. As a writer, when I'm going through and like copying things and visiting and looking through tons of documentation, having those makes it so much easier for me to mentally keep track of where I've been and what I've read. I love it. So all you web designers out there. All right, so there's also the target. For anchor tags, it specifies where to open it, the open the link. Okay. Um, usually, the only by self this underscore self, uh, you can actually just put self or you don't need to put anything. It'll by normally it will jump page to page. But if you want to open it in a new window, you can just use the the word blank. I've used yeah, I've done that one. Okay, you don't need to worry about the other ones. What? Uh, no, no, really. <laughs> Wait, well, why not? I want to learn about them all. No. Um, there's not enough time. Uh, 
Yeah, CSS is rough, man. I'm pretty bad at it, to be honest with you. I'm going through some tough CSS coding in Code Academy. Hmm. I wonder how far I got on Code Academy. I think I got through the CSS. I, I, I actually like Code Academy's setup. So you see how this works? We're, we have our, this is exactly what uh, you were asking a second ago. See, we have chapter four right here. Yeah. And this doesn't have to be um, a div. It can be an ID, but you'll see we'll jump. It's not jumping. There it goes. Oh! See? It'll bring it to the top, front and center. You That's know what's funny is, like, before I knew about these tags, I hated that. But now that I know about them, I love them. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right, so this is an example of a, f um, a full path URL. You see how it c goes from HTTPS, a full URL, right? Do you get what I mean by that? No. So a uh, full URL means that we're passing in a URL that's complete from start to finish from the the HTTPS to the colon w slash slash www. This is the entire path. Okay. Like, okay. And, and then there's a relative URL. Let me go ahead and close some of these. Right here, which where this is going to go, that's a relative path. It's assuming that based off this slash, whatever where, wherever we are, which in this case we're right here, that if we click to that, it's going to go slash HTML slash default.asp. That's a relative URL. Okay, so you're staying within the same, same website. website. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and this is how Now, you, is that better than yeah. having a full, yes, reloading if, the if, full thing? Uh -huh. Uh, um, if you're in your the site and the reason for that is because you're going to be developing locally mm -hmm. what's going to happen is you're going to use relative URLs because if you don't you're going to have to go back and change all your URLs that you put on your entire web application oh, Jesus. so that's why you use relative URLs because all you have to do is drag and drop and you're done okay now is that also more time efficient when the code is loading yes um it's more efficient, not necessarily that this is going to load. There's less text, so yes, but it's not noticeable. Um, when when talking about code being efficient, you're usually referring to uh, the JavaScript. Okay. HTML, you're not ever worried about. Okay. But uh, there's much more benefit to doing it like this. Uh, okay. Yeah, the HTML in Code Academy was easy, but it was it was beneficial. They touched on a lot of stuff. I think uh, maybe a little bit more than Free Code Camp did. Well, you'd be happy to know that their beta has a lot more stuff as well. Oh, well, there you go. All right, so we know all that. We've talked about the alts, source style, source alt. My thing is formatting images. Okay, so, okay, yeah. So, and then you can also do this for the, so the source is essentially where that image is located. Right. You can do relative paths for that as well. And that would be what you would do. You would never hard code a path. Okay. So this relative, good to know. I didn't know yeah, that relative versus hard coding. You never want to hard code anything if you don't have to. Now you have to hard code to an external site, right? Because we're not here, but. But within your own yes. local, you don't want to do that. Okay. I'd love to know why web dev jobs are uh, in the U.S. are better paid than the U.K. It would probably be a combination of... Um, Aren't we uh, technically more developed? I read, Type that into Google. There are some good articles on that shit. Uh, all right, let's, let's finish this page and I'll answer that question. Um, or Vox. Go to Vox, V-O-X. They have some good explanations on that as well. This is fucked up. Let me throw this in here. Why? What's up? You can put coordinates in here. That's <gasps> right. That is super cool. Like land coordinates. I, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. So there's shapes. You can start shaping things. You know, I actually came across that some of that writing, and I I was like, I don't know what this is. All right. Uh, we'll stop here for today. <laughs>
<laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna continue on going over um, all of this and W three schools so that you know what it what exists here. So let's let's stand up for a second. Okay. Uh, James, in a week you're gonna email me about another tutoring session. Sounds good, man. Uh, not this weekend though. Your boy's going to a hackathon. Uh, it's a three-day hackathon. He's gonna be busy. I'm hoping my finger is a little bit better by then. Uh, it's it's getting better every day. Okay, so somebody asked, hey, why do you think jobs, uh, dev jobs in the U.S. are better paid than the U.K.? Um, I've talked to quite a few. I've uh I've talked to a few. I know a few devs in the U.K. and one thing I could say is that uh, I don't know that that's always the case. It depends. Your salary depends on a lot of things. Um, cost of living for one. So maybe UK's cost of living is a little bit lower. It also depends on what sort of benefits you get. Because uh, depending on where in the United Kingdom you're living, if you're living in a, a very populated city, you may be paying more. If you have better health care, you may be paying more taxes than we are. Um, also, it depends on where the companies are and what they're paying you for. Uh, there's a lot of companies, uh, salaries for junior level roles vary quite a bit here. So I think it depends on what's, what skills are needed in your region and what's in demand. And also, uh, a junior developer compared to a senior developer differs so dramatically that I imagine a senior developer in the UK is probably close to what a senior developer in America is most of the time. So I don't. I wouldn't really worry about the junior developer roles so much as the senior developer roles. Did I hear that more companies are creating HTML mobile apps over native? Example, uh, uh, yeah, like React Native and stuff. I, I have heard that. Um, what is that? What does that mean? Um. So. Bye, Bricks. Thanks for coming and watching us. So we'll there, see you tomorrow. There are libraries. So remember we were talking about jQuery the other day? No. Yeah. And I was explaining to you the concept of a framework and a library. Yeah. And how they do certain things for you. So there are things like that, that uh, React Native is one of them, uh, that when you write it in a certain structure, it will allow you to compile it down into a, a mobile application and that you, you won't actually have to write a mobile app separate. Okay, so, that's what you were talking to me about a while back, yeah? Yeah, and so that's something that I'm interested in getting. I am, f at 48 years old, am I too old to change passing into web dev? No! No! no. <laughs> Absolutely not! <laughs> no, nah, keep, keep trucking, man. Uh, just do what you can. Dive in, get internships, freelance. I think freelance <laughs> would probably be the easiest route for you to go to get started. Um, just, just because I think I think that's probably a little more realistic. But that doesn't mean you're ever too old, man. You got plenty of good years ahead of you. You're just gonna give up. Uh, but don't let don't let that 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 negative. And I have a, I have a video coming out in a few days. Uh, literally titled, let me, I think it's titled, You Are Never Too Old to Learn to Code. He does. He literally does. There's, there's so much, there's, there's a, I don't know, I feel like there's, like, the, a lot of combat between the generations that are, like, oh, you, you know, some of the generations feel left out of the millennial generation, but the thing is, is the millennial generation is changing the structure of everything and rearranging it and anyone who resisting that change in that structure you can they're having a hard time dealing with it but i mean that's the beauty of being able to rearrange it and going your own path because you're never too old and you're never too young you're literally follow your heart <laughs> so here here's the video that i have coming out uh it looks like Tomorrow, actually, so it might be pretty relevant to you. Uh, who's it didn't that? come out soon enough. Yeah, so uh, this one's called Never Too Late to Become a Developer. And I talk about some of those things that, you know, reflecting back on how I felt the same way. I'm 29 years old, and do I wish I started much much earlier? Of course I did. Are there things yeah. that I, yeah. I wish that I, I did earlier besides meeting my wonderful girlfriend of soon-to-be 20 years? 
He's not uh, kidding you. <laughs> Twenty year plan, man. Uh so uh a little sneak peek, yeah. Uh that's what you guys get. You guys get a little tidbit when you show up to the um to the live streams. But it's never too late, man. It's are there going to be challenges? Yeah, there's challenges when you're young. There's challenges when you're old. There's, cha there's challenges when you're my age. Um, it, it just depends. And there's benefits at every age. At 48, a company may be more willing to take you on in a junior role, knowing that you're going to be appreciative and that you're mature, you have your shit together, and you're trying to better your life. And because of that, they may, be, they may take you on for that. I can't tell you how many jobs I've lost out on to people who are just generally age-wise older than me. And they're told, and I'm told, well, they have more experience. More experience in life, maybe. <laughs> but I mean, I, I really do think that in some companies, or it depends on who you're talking to, age does have a benefit. So, I mean. And I, I, I say this being on the opposite end of the spectrum is I, I literally am one of the youngest guys in the company. And so in my office, I'm the second youngest. And uh, that's so I'm, I'm and significantly most people are married, have children and are making what I consider to be very poor choices in those directions. But besides that, oh, uh, I didn't think that's where you're going with that. <laughs> no, <laughs> take away that lie. No. But uh, <laughs> uh, my, my point is this, is that um, people who are younger have issues. People who are older have issues. People who are right in the middle have issues. Um, but it's never, it's never too late, man. You just got to work past it. It may be a little harder. Everything's a little harder. Uh, it's a little harder for me to land a, a developer job because I didn't finish my CS degree, but here I am working. Yeah, I agree with worlds. It cuts both ways. There's a lot of programmers that like to put down younger devs too. I mean, from every generation, we're kind of standing from our point of views with biasness, selfishness, whatever is affecting us at that time. But in the end, we're all human. And when we get our consciousness straight, we realize that we are all human and, you know, we'll forgive each other eventually. I maybe. Never, I never forgive or forget. It's okay, neither do I. <laughs> um, we had a cool comment up here by Jez. I tried Code Academy but found Free Comped to be way better now and I'm flying thanks to you guys. I hope you're trying out the beta, man. There's a lot more good stuff on the beta. It's a little buggy and they're still adding stuff. A little buggy? But There's it, not a day we haven't gone through with our, we might have gone through one lesson without one bug. That's I know, it. I know how to work it though. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's great to hear, Jess. Keep up the awesome work. I hope you keep flying, soaring, soar high. Oh. Um. Chris Haas, wait, I'm going to do right after getting his CS degree. Yeah. He's over 50. Yeah. <coughs> Chris Hawks always sounds depressed to you, so I, I am a, I'm a Chris Hawks fan. Um, I think I think what you're you're um, you're taking away from Chris is not depression so much as somebody who doesn't actually like being on camera. I think he enjoys YouTube. I don't think he enjoys public speaking, and because he's not there in front of people, I think that's what you're getting out of it. And I think I think uh, I think as developers, we have a tendency to be monotone a bit. I know I have in the past, but, um, I mean, I, I like Chris I Hawks. have those days where I, I literally, like, you guys will see me. Like, if I go back and watch the videos, you'll see me. I'm, like, really, like, timid. I look shy. I look like I don't have anything to say. And that's just simply because I'm just not feeling it. Like, I don't want to be in front of the camera. But we made a commitment to be in front of the camera every day for 100 days. Regardless of how I feel. <laughs> That's right. I told her she didn't commit. I was kicking her out. That's it. I said, no pressure, baby. <laughs> Say, you're going to be sleeping no, in the car. No, it was for me. You know, saying that for me, I'm I'm pretty hard when it comes to saying, I'm all right, I committed 100 days. Let's do this. You know, 100%. Rain or shine, sickness and death, I will be here those 100 days whether I want to be or not. And I'll... Be here as me as best as I can. That's what anyone can do. Google's Chris Hawks. Yeah. 
Right? I was about to do the same thing. I'm like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Chris Hawks is a YouTuber who does, you know how I do like my Ask a Dev videos where I talk about things? Mm -hmm. he, he does the same thing, except he's, he has about 70,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And he's doing quite well for himself. Good for, so good for Chris. Um, all right, baby, you want you want uh, you want to say anything? Oh, let me do my spiel, and then you can do your spiel. Do I have a spiel? Yeah, the, the I can have a spiel. The long and prosper. Oh. Well, not now that you've said it. No, uh, that one doesn't count. All right, um, all right, guys, my spiel. Join the Facebook group, Kotech and Caffeine. The link is in the description, and support me on Patreon. That's always dope. Dot com slash coding tutorial three hundred and sixty. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We're only in day 14. Day 14. We have 86 more. I got an email today saying, hey, man, how come you haven't been doing too many coding tutorials and all these sort of advice, story-driven developers? I was like, I don't have time, man. I spent an hour a day plus on these Ask a Dev or on these tutoring, so. Yeah, I really sucked the life out of him. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Anyways, also, guys, I would like to add to his spiel, my spiel, which is... Go ahead and share these videos. Try to help us grow the channel, and that way we can do more content. He can do more content. Stop bitching, all that stuff. And also, code long and prosper. You stop bitching.